following what's new in Photoshop. It's gotten a little bit odd lately because Adobe has a beta version, which they've always had, but they also have a public beta, which they actually promote a lot. Um, so now you see all these new feature videos, you don't know if it's beta, if it's real. So all that to say that Adobe did release a real version of Photoshop this week. It's not beta. Um, and for a mid-year release, uh, it's actually got a decent amount of features in it that we're going to take a look here. Of course, to uh, make sure you update your Photoshop, you got to go to your Creative Cloud updater. You might have to refresh or restart it. All questions about that should always go to Adobe. But in the meantime, we can take a look at what's new. Now, the first feature is a selection brush tool, and it's actually located in with the lasso tools. And it's it's actually it's really the perfect place for it, because for me, it mostly takes the place of the lasso tools. It's, it's not a tool that I'm going to use a lot as I really don't use the lasso tool. So you're not going to make very precise selections for this. Uh, this is when you you want just a big general selection of an area. Uh, it's got various settings here. You can see it's got size and hardness. So I'm going to take a make a big brush here. I'll show you one, one quick thing that I do often to my photos. I'll hit the right bracket key, left bracket key works just like all brushes. But a lot of times I would take the lasso tool, make a quick selection and feather the middle of it, and then invert that selection. And we can do that right with our little task bar there. Remember, this is a selection. Even though it doesn't look like a selection, you don't see those marching ants, it is a selection. And so if I were to go to my layers panel and press Command or Control J, it will duplicate the layer as if that was a selection. And what would happen? I only had the outside selected, so that's all we got. Um, and then there, I just change the blend mode here, change it to multiply, adds a little bit of a vignette. Yeah, I'd probably normally do this inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw. Um, I'm not opposed to doing it inside of Photoshop if I happen to be there with the photo, so I don't really care where I do it. It's just usually Lightroom or Camera Raw is where I'm going to be at when I'm editing uh, most of my photos. So I'll do it there, but again, just a, a technique to show you and more a way to show you uh, what this tool is. To, if you want a little bit of background, it really takes the place of the quick mask tool. A lot of people never even knew it was there. It's right down here in the layer in the toolbox, right below your foreground and background swatches. And the quick mask tool was essentially letting you mask or create a selection with a brush. And that's all this is there. It's, it's really just a duplicate of that area. So that's why you see that overlay there. Uh, we'll delete that layer. I'll hit the left bracket key, make my uh, brush a little bit smaller. Another thing that we do that I would normally lasso or use the lasso tool with, that area in the top left here, this area to me is a little bit bright. I don't mind bright areas. It's just when they're in a corner, uh, they tend to bug me a little bit more. So I would lasso that area. And then I would usually go to something like content or fill. Um, now, more often than not, I'll just go to generative fill and I wouldn't give it a prompt. I'll just hit generate and it'll usually fill that area with something a little bit more solid. Um, again, just on the corners of my photos, I tend to like to avoid big, bright areas like that. So uh, same thing, again, where I usually use the lasso tool for something like that. So anytime you would use the lasso tool, uh, I think this tool is probably a little bit easier, a little bit better. Um, but probably a little bit more visual too. I just don't necessarily think you're going to make very accurate selections with it, so don't expect don't expect it to change your overall the the way that you make selections. Now another tool. Let's zoom into this one here. I'm going to zoom into the top left corner where we did uh, generative fill here. Uh, if you look over at the variations that generative fill gave us, and it typically gives you three. If you look over at the variations, you'll see in the top left corner is an enhanced detail button. Okay. And if you don't see the properties panel, you just go to the window menu. Uh, you can not only show your properties, but you can also see that contextual taskbar uh, if you happen to have hit it at some point. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on that enhanced detail icon and it's going to try to make it a little bit sharper. Okay. It's not going to, number one, you could get an error message if the area you're trying to enhance isn't big enough. So keep that in mind, but um, it's not going to be night and day. So it keeps, it actually keeps, it makes a duplicate of the variation. So the one we're looking at is the enhanced one. If I hit the right arrow here, you can see the basic one. Oh, you really got a pixel peep to see this stuff. That's the enhanced one. That's the basic one. Um, at normal human levels of us looking at the photo, you'd never really even see those differences there. So you really got a pixel peep to the area to see it. Um, again, don't look for, 
Don't, don't look for a huge change from enhanced detail, but if you need to add a little bit of noise, a little bit of texture, a little bit of extra sharpness to uh, whatever you used your generative fill on, um, then that's one of the new features that you can try out. I also think you should give my real world Photoshop AI course a try. It is on sale this week. It's uh, nice, short, uh, easy to get through, very affordable. And it's for photographers that, that want to that wanna use the power of AI, don't want all the fake stuff, okay? You just want it to help take the grunt work away. Um, I, I think most photographers don't necessarily want Photoshop to generate an image for them so they don't have to take their camera out and shoot it. I think most people just want AI to take the grunt work away. And that's where my course can help you out. Uh, things like selections, you know, nobody, nobody really likes making complex selections. Let AI do that for you. Matching colors, there's a lot of things that, that AI and some of those neural filters can do. Uh, we talk a lot about removing distractions and some of the tools we have where AI can help. Cause again, that's the grunt work. I, I would say that AI can help me remove distractions today in photos on, on things that two or three years ago, I wouldn't have even tried it. I would have looked at it and walked away from it and just said, I'm not even gonna bother where I'm able to do it today. So it is on sale this week. I hope you'll swing by uh, to find out a little bit more. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, uh, next up here, we have some AI stuff. So I'm gonna create a new blank image for this and uh, we can actually fill a blank image now. This is Adobe catching up to, to really what its competitors have been able to do for a couple of years now. But check with Adobe on, on how big of an image you'll be able to create. I'm sure that'll cr change over time here. But your, uh, your little contextual taskbar, which if you've lost it, just go under the window menu. You can see generate image, and also it's always under the edit menu. All your generative stuff is there as well. So now, rather than just selecting an area and giving it a prompt to fill a specific area, we can create an image from scratch. I'm not gonna get into all the debates on, on people that's trying to kill photography. It's, it's not. People that like photography are still gonna do photography, and it, it, it will continue to be valued, but, there are uses for this stuff. So in this case, let's say I wanna make a texture. So I'll just say create a, a gritty texture with a smooth, wispy, cloud-like appearance with muted fall colors. I don't know, something like that. Well, that's just an idea. Uh, you get to choose your content type, art or photorealistic. You can even upload a reference image to create something from. So it works great, especially if you want it to, to take on certain colors. And then there are various effects and things that you can look at here. Um, from there, we'll go over, you'll also see there's some prompts that you can look at your own. So if you wanted to get some ideas for prompts, Adobe changes this every, every time I open it up, it's actually a little bit different. But then we'll just click generate here. You can always uh, work with what it gives you or start over again, but there's, there's an example of it and we'll just click through. You can see it gives you three examples. Um, so some interesting things that you can create there. Again, not gonna be for everybody, but just good to know that it's there. I, I actually opened up a blank image and just typed generate a flying eagle. And, uh, and this is what it gave me. So uh, pretty interesting to see some of the things that it creates. Again, just click on that generate button on a blank image there. And uh, you can see that you can choose from different prompts here. So if I click on that one, it's actually gonna pre-fill the prompt that created that for me. Chances are that yours looks exactly like that. It's gonna be pretty slim to none, but uh, at least know it's there. And again, this is just Adobe coming up to speed um, with you know, Mid Journey and some of those other companies that have been able to do this for quite a while. Now, the last main feature that we have here is the adjustment brush tool. So the adjustment brush tool is a way for us to more intuitively work with various adjustment layers. So you go over here, you can see there's a tool, specific tool in the toolbox for it. And then what happens is if you look in your contextual taskbar, uh, you're gonna see some options for it there. And again, you'll see all the main options for it up here in the top uh, options bar. So you choose the adjustment and these are just basically your, your same adjustment layers that you've been able to do if you went to your adjustments panel over here on the right hand side or wherever you happen to put that panel. So you can choose an adjustment. You can choose uh, whether you want to add or subtract to the adjustment with the brush. You can choose the brush size, uh, opacity flow, all these different options with it. So I'm gonna choose a photo filter adjustment, which is gonna give us a warming effect. And then what I do is just paint over onto the photo. So I thought that rock up front was a little bit warm or a little bit cool, well maybe 
paint over here in the sky and on that background a little bit, okay? Now, what it did is just what an adjustment layer would do. Uh, it opens up in the properties panel where you can make different adjustments to it with uh, whatever settings that adjustment layer happens to do. It will create a layer in the layers panel with a mask on it, and then you use the plus and minus brushes to go in here and paint on that mask, which again, you're not really doing anything, anything that different other than these are presets and can maybe speed up the process a little bit, but it's pretty much taking adjustment layers and just making them a little bit more intuitive, a little bit faster and easier to get to uh, and work with there. And for those of you that use Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw for your photo, would I do what I just did here inside of there? I, I probably would. Um, but there are times where I'm in Photoshop, I don't wanna go back to Lightroom or Camera Raw. I don't really care where I make an adjustment on the photo. So there are times where I do use adjustment layers if I happen to already be working on that photo um, inside of Photoshop there. But for, for the diehard Lightroom and, and Camera Raw users that just try to do everything in there, yeah, this, this tool's probably not gonna be what you use, but there are plenty of people that don't do all their, their work in the raw edits, which is where something like this comes in handy. Okay, uh, last thing we got is just a couple of small adjustments. If you're, uh, if you uh, do anything or a lot with text inside of Photoshop, so I'll just go in here and type in text, uh, you will see that you are able to go in here and uh, do numbers bullet points. So again, we open up our properties panel and you'll see bullets and numbering, not a huge feature, but if you are somebody that does a lot of text, uh, it's something that can help out. Uh, also, if you were to go into free transform, command or control T on any layer, the contextual taskbar now pops up uh, more things for you to do. And just overall, this contextual taskbar tends to show more things based on the tools you're working with, whether it's shape tools, whether it's type tools, all those different things. So there's just been some improvements to what this uh, little taskbar, which Adobe seems to be pushing more and more, uh, what this little taskbar can do. While you are here, uh, chances are that if you're using Photoshop as a photographer, you probably also use Lightroom. And uh, we're talking about artificial intelligence and some of the features in there. Well, Lightroom has a new AI feature fairly recent as well. So if you're looking for another video to go watch, I talked about that specific feature in this video. So that's a great place to go to next.